What is up guys, welcome back to episode six of our Big Bad BRC Racing YZ500M two-stroke dirt bike build. My name is Charles, owner of MX Revival and MXRevival.com. And when we're done building this bike, one of you guys is taking it home. So go ahead and get yourselves entered on MXRevival.com. And when you do, you're automatically entered into every YouTube episode's MX parts giveaways, including today's episode. Guys, as you can see, our frames are back. They look amazing. And you loved episode four so much. So many of you commented to me that you wanted the full Fast Blast tour over at Fast Blast and Coat, that Dean actually invited us back and let us see the entire powder coating process start to finish. So that's today's video, really excited about it. And as is with any master of his craft, there were a ton of tips and tricks. I learned a lot, so I know you're going to love today's episode, but check these frames out. Our main frame is a gorgeous dark blue, very OEM Yamaha. In fact, a little better in my opinion, just a little bit deeper, a little bit darker. Every hole, every pivot, every threaded area or metal contact point on this frame has been prepped to the max to ensure I will not have to chase a single thread when I start putting everything back together. This frame is absolutely gorgeous. Cannot believe how nice it came out. And the swing arm, well, that's a perfect example of the vision I had for this bike as well. Long before I ever even took these parts to Dean, he absolutely killed everything I brought in. And the silver we use on the swing arm is a hopped up, much better looking silver than that of the painted type that used to come on these bikes back in the day. And the subframe, I just couldn't help myself. I had to keep it old school. We went with the blue on the aluminum subframe, just like those old steel frame bikes before aluminum subframes were a thing. It was perfect timing for the frames to come back because behind the scenes and between episodes, I've been stripping, prepping, and replating all of the hardware in your YZ500, all your linkage bolts, all your engine bolts, all the steel parts in your brakes, brake pedal pins, all those things have been zinc plated. They look amazing. That way, when the engine comes back, we can drop that sucker in, turnkey, everything will be fresh, no stone unturned. You guys know how we do it. If you guys want a more in-depth overview of the zinc plating process, you can let me know below or if you're tired of all my zinc plating videos because I've done a ton, there's also a link in the description below it shows you how to do it, how to do it at home, what I use, the whole deal. So you guys will be able to do the exact same thing with your hardware. Now guys, when we get back from Fast Blast and Coat, I'm gonna have a brand new MX Revival MX Parts giveaway for you. So stay tuned for that because I know you're gonna love it. In the meantime, let's get the hell out of here and head over to Fast Blast and Coat. All right, we're back again, Fast Blast and Coat with my man Dean. And I think you guys are gonna be pumped because you loved episode four. If you didn't see it, check it out. But we are back with another YZ500 build episode. And you guys probably don't even recognize the old 500. Look at that. That's the frame that came out of the, uh, the dead hooker tank. I keep calling it that. I might get in trouble eventually, but we'll see. So, dude, what, what's going on here with the frame, and how are you doing this morning? Uh, we're getting ready to blast it. Uh, as you can see, all the, all the paint is gone. We have uh, went to phase two, which is in the oven. We gas it out, and uh -huh. obviously it just you know, starts puking stuff all over the place, and, and it gets a little rusty. It's just surface rust. Right, okay. Um, so this so is basically every time you pull something out of the, they, the tank. They come out ugly like okay. this. And, and then uh, we're going to throw it in the blast cabinet, get it all ready to coat today. Yeah. Um, but we do a few little things before we do that. We make sure there's no hangnails or, or um, gouges or stuff like that. We'll clean that up. Yeah. There was a couple of those on this frame. Yeah, it looks like you removed some some factory welding slag. Is there like a spot that I can yeah, show? Like a little I mean, tiny that's, spot that's like extreme attention here. to detail. There was a couple in there, a couple in here. Uh huh. Looks we just good. like to knock those off. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, there's one one right, right there I probably could get off. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> what else? You, you got the um, VIN protected? We got the VIN. The VIN's protected. Now, some of these um, aren't deep enough. The funny thing about this one, these are raised letters. Oh, okay. Some are actually engraved. Right. So I went ahead and taped that because I want to protect those raised right. letters. Yeah, especially for the new owner, right, when they register this thing. If some of the Huskies, KTMs, um, they engrave them, but they're real shallow. Mm -hmm. um, so those will come actually, off in the blast process, right? Sometimes. It'll make it worse. Yeah. Um, so we'll use like a, we'll use a mini engraver and uh, oh. we go in there and clean up the, the VIN numbers. Got it. Um, Get it a little more staying power before you do what you do. Yeah. And even sometimes, even after that, we'll still uh, tape it off um, because you're doing a two stage. First one's going to be color, second's clear. Okay. Um, so we could just tape that off and then we'll do the blue, the royal rather, 
we'll peel that off and then put the clear on it. So it'll protect that spot. Okay, cool. So there'll be no blue on the bin, but then we'll shoot the clear on it and it won't rust. So in other words, today you're taking us through the entire process due to popular demand. We did the, uh, like I said, EP4, we did the mm -hmm. tank. Now we're gonna see the prep process, the blast process, and then we're actually gonna throw mm -hmm. some powder on this thing. Yep. inside of the booth so that's that's going to be a real treat for me to be honest and then uh yeah of course everyone else is going to love it as well so thanks for having us this one's wild it's going to be an illusion color and it's a dormant powder so when you see the first coat go on it's not going to be the color it's going to be when it's done okay and cool. i think you'll be uh you'll be pretty surprised what it looks like i we're all very excited okay we're going in a blast all right let's do it okay colin you're gonna be on camera <laughs> your first day you're already on film you're a star <laughs> Maybe let's get this wiped down again so he can try to get some footage in the cabinet. Cool. So this is the dry blast. Are you, what are we shooting this thing with for the DIYer? So there's a um, 100 grit um, garnet sand in there. Um, we use an upgraded uh, gun from Tacoma Company. Mm -hmm. um, it does a nice job. It's more efficient than the standard gun you'd get in like a harbor freight cabinet or something yeah better than the one that came in its stock probably and yeah okay yeah this is a nice cool. cabinet it's a clamshell cabinet um i like that front door like that you can uh get these from a company called redline stands it's mm -hmm. a it's a guy that sells a lot of uh, motorcycle stands but mm -hmm. he has some really cool uh equipment but yeah it shouldn't take him more than maybe 20 30 minutes and we'll be oh really ready okay to plug it and, it's fast and uh it's pretty quick fast blast all right colton let's see what you got brother tear it up <laughs> Don't mind me, all right? <laughs> so you can see it changed from rust to that, that concrete color. We're putting the etch on it, which helps adhesion. Like I say, it shouldn't take them but about 30 minutes, so. Hey, Colton, can we do that top rail? Because I can see it really well. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a ripper. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right, Josh, what you got there, man? You got the frame out. Looks a little different. Yeah, I'm gonna start cleaning up all the weld splatters. Okay. If there's any dents or anything real quick. What do you quick. see on there that you might wanna? Oh, just along in here. Okay, a few more little slaggies. Yeah, just clean it up some right in here. Uh -huh. Very cool. It's a nice frame. You like it? It's, a, it's in decent shape compared to some of the other stuff that comes in, you think? Oh yeah. Okay, that's good to Way know. Nicer. I wasn't really sure. And then one thing that we do is, is we got these circles here. Uh -huh. You place them right over where you put your magneto. Okay, so you just don't even let those threads get powdered no. up in the first place. Is no. that like a... That way like, you have ground too. Oh, I see. It's cover, It's a broader surface area for the coil. That's slick, man. So you got a sticker that goes down that gives you a little more raw steel so your coil has a place to attach and you don't have to grind a bunch of the brand new powder off. Exactly. All right, so we're plugged up. We got all the slag off that thing. It went into the oven for a minute for a gas out. Or no, that's not a gas oven, yeah, it's a preheat We now. like to shoot it a little warm when okay. it's just cold. Okay. So you put it in just for a second just to warm it up a tad. Nice. So what are we doing now? So he is throwing the powder on. And you can see it's uh, it's sticking on its own. He's going to have to work at getting in some of the tight areas. That is such a cool color. I mean, I know it's going to change. It's going to change. We'll talk about yeah. that in a second. Yeah. This that is, is such a cool color. This is Prismatic Powders uh, Illusion Royal, so it's going to require a top coat. Illusion this Royal. This is a dormant base coat. Dormant base coat. And then what's the second step? Second step is a clear. Okay. That'll not only add some, some gloss to it, but it actually transforms the color into its final color. Nice. How exciting, man. I've never actually seen this done. Yeah, you can see that most of it is, is pretty much sticking to the frame. Uh -huh. um, there is some that uh, you know get sucked into the filter, but you can see the ground. There's, there's like hardly anything on the ground. Yeah, nice and clean down there. So he's shooting into that hard to reach area there, and there's a there's a, a phenomenon called Faraday, mm -hmm. where it wants to kick the powder back out at you and not actually hit that spot. Okay, down here so, in this cavity. 
he'll use like different techniques of shooting it at like a different angle. Okay. Um, but for the most part, um, it'll stick on its own. Very cool. So you see that yellow wire that's attached to the top? That's actually our ground. Okay. So it's grounded to the cabinet. I see. So you got a positive and negative charge coming out of the gun. That's how it, it sticks like a like would it like a balloon, you know? It's uh, okay. static, clean kind of. Yeah. So it's a a lot like the zinc process, right? Yeah. An electrified Similar. part. So he'll just keep spraying until he feels like he's got good coverage, and then we're gonna. Those LED lights actually let you see through the powder. So he'll actually see like a gray area where he didn't get with that LED light. Okay, the light so that's on the gun. He's gonna check all those tough to reach spots with the light and make sure it's covered and then, uh, then we'll go in the oven. Very cool. In the oven she goes. I owe you, uh, I owe you some money for a tip, I think. Whoa, that would have been a good one. <laughs> All right, buddy. You too. All right, so she just went in the oven. What happens now? So he, um, we're just going to flash it. Okay. Uh, meaning we just want the powder to flow out. Okay. Um, you can tell when it flows out when it just it looks wet. Mm. Um, so he's going to warm up the subframe, give the frame time to uh, flow out, shoot the subframe, throw them in. We gotta wait for it to get up to uh, curing temperature, which is, I believe, three. Is it 375 or 400, Josh? 400. So we'll wait till it gets to 400. Every powder's a little different. Um, some are 375, some are 400. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get it up to 400, and then we set a timer. But this is just gonna be a flow out, so we're just waiting for it to flash over pretty much. Got it. And then the next step is the clear. And we'll do the final Very nice. clear, and that's when we let it sit the full cure time. I am pumped to see the subframe in the same blue it's going to be uh you'll be blown away it just it, it's going to come out of the oven and not you're going to be like what the heck i didn't pick that color yeah uh, but just wait until we put oh, it clear and it'll... you know i trust you All right, here she is. Oh yeah, I see what you mean about the different color. Subframe as well. Even a little purple. Time for some clear coat. We're gonna see this thing change color. Okay, here we go, the big reveal. All right, let's see. Holy crap, that's so different. Ah. How's that? That was the right color choice. <laughs> Absolutely. How sweet. Beautiful. That's probably one of the most OEM Yamaha blue schemes I've seen. Like I say, that's gonna, that's gonna calm down a little bit. It's a little on the dark side, so. Yeah. Give that you know 10 minutes to cool and it actually might get just a little bit lighter. Cool. Hey Josh, can we bring one out here real quick? Yeah. So I can get a little bit of light on it. It's kind of tough for the camera back there. Perfect. Awesome, man. Oh yeah. You would never know that was gonna come out that color. It goes yeah. from Isn't that crazy? bluish to grayish purple to white to that. That's beautiful. And so this is going to Maybe get a little more vibrant, you said? Um, kind of cool or, or lighten up? When it, when it finally does all of its cooling, it'll, it might lighten up a little bit. It won't be as, as dark. I love that. That's very OEM Yamaha. Good job. That's a little better. Oh, I got some light. That looks so good. How awesome. But look at the difference. Isn't that crazy? That was poor okay, clear. yeah, good That's example. So yeah. these bicycle frames were the same color. Yeah. Uh, Pre-clear coat. And wow. Josh is pulling his stickers off there. Very thoughtful, so we don't have to grind the powder coat off for our coil. 
So this guy back here, old, old crust bucket, this is going to be <laughs> like, uh, we're going to finish that up with, uh, it's going to be a surprise. Next time we come back at pickup, guys, we'll show you. We're going to do like a lightish gray, right? Something like that? I yeah. I kind of forget, actually. Like a grayish O2, back when they used to paint these things. All right, Dean, looks really good. Thank you for having us. Anything you want to close out with? No, oh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, it's a uh, pleasure. That was the final process of the powder coat. And if you got anything else to do, bring it by and we'll run you through that too. Oh, you, you no, I will. we still got coat to do. And well, you've done enough of the vapor blast. They know all about that. But uh, yeah, we could do an episode on the Cerakote we're going to do on your uh, silencer. Well, that's right. The, yeah. the etch, right? Yeah, um, that's still hot. So um, I think he's going to shoot the swing arm tonight. So okay. I want to swing cool. by tomorrow and you'll have everything you need to assemble. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right, brother. Thanks. Thanks. All right, guys, we're back. Round three with Dean at Fast Blast and Coat, and he has some breaking news about the BRC YZM500 not fitting in our beautiful blue frame. Yeah, so we, we changed it up. Um, you know, just one motor's boring. So we're going to do a, uh, a 500 twin. Okay. And we found the frame that it will fit in. What in the world is that? Thing looks like Shamu, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I believe that's a Z1 or a Z1? some, some okay. crazy four-cylinder I'm crotch rocket street bike. Blown away that you even have the space to work on that thing. But uh, should we tell them the truth? What do you think? Yeah, uh, the right. truth is the uh, the 500 is ready. And it's ready for a motor. It is f***ing gorgeous. We'll get it in some better light, but guys, came out so good. That work is called Illusion Royal, and then you've got BMW Silver on the swing arm. So, I can't believe, as already stated, how amazing this looks, close to OEM Yamaha Blue, and this is a whole nother story. This is so clean. It is very, it's like a super stock version of the O2 swing arms that have the silver paint. The whole thing came out so, so good. Yeah, really. your VIN's ready, you know, it's, uh, we, we spent some time to make sure the VIN's mm -hmm. still good. You got ground for your coil. Uh, you won't have to run a single tap in anything. Yep. Uh, your swing arm's going to fit perfectly because we make sure there's no coating on the okay. where the swing arm goes. I won't be in there with a Prime MX wheel. Nope. It's ready <laughs> to go. It looks Start amazing. Start bolting stuff on. Dude, thank you so much. You did You're an welcome. amazing job. You're welcome. Josh! Josh, get over here. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. I'm acting like I actually did stuff. Uh, Josh did 90% of the work It was all me. You killed it, bro. Thank you. Thank you. It looks beautiful. <laughs> So guys, having said that, we're going to sign off. It's been a pleasure getting to know Dean better. Going to hang out in his shop and show you guys what's going down with Powder Coat. And there will be more. We've got some uh, silencer etching. A cool little trick Dean does here coming up. And until next time, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Peace. Such a killer time with Dean and the boys over at Fast Blast. I know I've said it a hundred times, but I am so pumped on this. It is so freaking close to the OEM color and I like it a little better. It's a little darker. It even has the tiny little metallic flake sparkles in it, just like the OEM paint. The swing arm is exactly what I was going for as well. The vision for this bike is an ultra pumped up super stock where we have an OEM look and OEM cues, but a ton of overboard hard parts. So cannot wait to show you guys what's coming next. It's going to blow your mind. I absolutely promise. So Dean and crew at Fast blast thank you for crushing this for all of us looking forward to our next project together you guys can get a hold of dean and learn more about what he does by checking all of the links in the description below and don't worry if you want to send your stuff in easy to do you can ship them parts as small as brakes all the way up to mainframes and you know it's going to come back looking tits so guys here we go it is time for an all new mx revival mx parts giveaway now i've got two types of giveaways for you guys today we have a giveaway for my guys who have already entered on mx revival to win the yz500 and then we're going to do a comment giveaway so for all my guys who have already entered to win annihilator this first one's for you so first up my buddy josh at 3dp moto custom 3d printed a set of front and rear brake line guides for our yz500 project so today josh and i are going to be giving giving away two sets of these front and rear brake line guides. For the YZ500 project, he also sent us a set of swing arm plugs, both in black and gray. The gray plugs actually match the silver swing arm perfectly. We may go ahead and try the black later too if they tie into some of the other accents on the bike, and we like that. All 3DP Moto parts are a direct bolt-on for your damaged or stained OEM units. They're super flexible, super resilient if you were to go down in a crash, and maybe best of all, you can even personalize these things. You guys can run your last name, your race number, whatever 
whatever you want. In our case, we went ahead and used our custom YZ500 logo that my boys at Decal Works made for this project. Josh was able to burn that right into the front brake line guide perfectly. You're gonna to start to see more of this throughout the build, this particular logo. Now, Josh makes 3D printed parts for a variety of bikes, not just Yamahas. So if you win today's giveaway and you don't have a Yamaha, most likely we still have you covered. So don't worry about it. Josh, you killed it on these. Thank you, bro. Next up, my buddy Chris at Watson Synthetics has supplied this entire bike with top of the line AMS oil chemicals, fork oil, dominator premix, transmission oil, mud slinger, chain lube, all of it. So Chris has us dialed in with the best chemicals to keep the YZ500 protected. And so today, courtesy of Watson Synthetics, we're gonna be hooking you guys up with two quarts of your favorite AMS oil product. If you're a two stroke guy, we're gonna send you a quart of the AMS oil transmission fluid and one quart of the dominator premix. If you're a four stroke guy, we're gonna set you up with two quarts of AMS oil's engine oil. Now, if it's something you're interested in, Chris can also set you guys up to become AMS oil dealers. So whether it's for you or maybe you have customers, they want to keep their trucks, sleds, dirt bikes, cars, whatever it is running and protected all year long. That'll be something you guys can dabble into if you'd like. So Chris, thank you for hooking my guys up with the best chemicals in the game. You guys can learn more about 3DP Moto and Watson Synthetics by checking the links in the description below. And Josh, Chris, I appreciate you guys. Now for our comment giveaway today, I'm back with three more of these awesome Decal Works t-shirts. As some of you already know, they are commemorative of this MX Revival Decal Works YZ500 build. The shirts are super soft super comfortable. They kind of make me look buff, so I'm trying not to steal too many of them out of the box. Anyways, they fit really good. So for today's comment giveaway, guys, I want you to let me know what your favorite part of the powder coating process was over at Fast Blast. Was it the chemical tank from episode four? Maybe it was the blasting, the actual baking, the powder going on. So let me know what your favorite part of the process was or something cool that you learned that you didn't know before. For me, I really like the prep level stuff. I was stoked when I saw Josh put the little circle decals on the frame where the coil goes so we have a good ground later. With all that said, guys, and the one girl that maybe watches this channel, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for being the most important part of this build series and what we're doing. None of this stuff happens without you guys. If you guys missed out on last week's episode where we tore down the ultra nasty YZ250 donor engine, you can catch that right here. Also, here's a link to get entered on mxrevival.com to win the YZ500. I'd be pumped if you had time to share these videos with a friend. Really gives a nice boost to what we're trying to do here. And until next time, guys, shred safe and and I will see you soon.